United Healthcare. We're happy to help you get the information you need today. Para continuar en español, I have this phone number. For security, please tell me your date of birth or enter it using your telephone keypad. United Healthcare, my name is Robert. And who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? This is Professor Solange Martinez. Robert, how are you? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Good. Robert, do you have an ID number by any chance? Um, no. Uh, go ahead with that if you have it. Okay. Um, the um, reason of my call is that I have a, an elderly and chronically ill um, epileptic citizen here um, who is uh, got um, uh, migraine headaches uh, and shingles. She has been taking medication for uh, these uh, shingles, which is a uh, uh, an, il an illness that gives you tremendous uh, pain because it affects your nervous system and um, it gives you open sores uh, all over your body, including your genitals, as well as the inside of your mouth. So she was prescribed um, Fancyclover 500 milligrams um, by a doctor, a licensed doctor, uh, at uh, one of the ERs that I took her to. And uh, the doctor uh, warned that this antivirus uh, gives migraine, uh, gives headaches, but she suffers from migraine headaches uh, way before I took her to the emergency room. So she gets them um, uh, worse than you and I would get if we took this antivirus. So uh, the doctor said to take it, um, to take uh, an anti-migrant headache medication, which is called somatriptan 25 milligrams, a pill, at the onset of the headache, which means that when she takes the antivirus and um, at the start of the headache, headache she should take uh, somatriptan 25 milligrams and uh, take it every uh, three hours uh, or so uh, while taking the antivirus because she's going to get the headache. Uh, there is no way to avoid that because this is uh, the side effect of this antivirus for the shingles. Now, um, the doctor uh, prescribed this uh, medication, the migraine headache medication, and he listed 36 pills but she only uh, was uh, given nine pills at the pharmacy because they said that you guys uh, were not uh, paying for more than uh, nine pills per month. But uh, the doctor prescribed this medication, and he's a licensed doctor, and she has uh, this antivirus that she needs to take, and that's why I'm calling to uh, have the authorization to get the 36 pills because if she takes only the nine pills, she's going to run out, uh, run out after the uh, eighth day of taking this um, migraine headache medication along with the antivirus. That's why I'm calling. Okay. Now, there is a quantity limit for that of nine for 30 days. So, yeah, like you said, so if, if she needs to have a quantity limit exception done, the best way to have have that done is to have the doctor call directly. Um, but they're pretty strict on these things. I, I, I don't know if it'll be approved or not, but that's the best way to have that done. Yes, uh, Robert, but the problem is that um, the, the, uh, Luisa Oyasun doesn't have a doctor because um, the illegal aliens mafia member uh, members Kevin McGuire and Diane Dane uh, have been trafficking with citizens' identities and government benefits, and they have been uh, trafficking with her uh, identity and government benefits, which means that they sold her New York State trade Medicaid to illegals in the country and illegal aliens mafia members. And that's why she cannot have a medical doctor because she has uh, only uh, the choice of going to uh, emergency um, care, which means the ER of the hospitals not uh, a medical doctor. So she doesn't have a medical doctor, even though she's dying of cancer because the cancer came back a third time and is now um, in her lungs uh, and in uh, her liver and uh, um, colon because of the lack of medical care and medication due to the selling of her New York State trade Medicaid to illegal aliens in the country. And this is after she has worked about um, uh, dozens of years, now I'm not exactly uh, how many years, but dozens of years uh, paid her taxes, paid into her social security, and done everything right. 
and she's in the same boat as millions of other citizens who are the illegal aliens mafia victims. So what I want to do is um, speak to a supervisor and see if I can get these um, uh, uh, pills approved so she can take her antivirus. Yes, the member ID uh, is the following, uh, which can uh, give her a heart attack and uh, other things, uh, other chronic illnesses. So you don't need to pass disclosure because you have, you should be able to see uh, the form signed by her in the computer, in the AARP computer. Okay, what doctor? Hmm? What doctor? Uh, Matthew Cummins is the doctor. That oh, okay, yes, yes, okay. So I can certainly do that, not a problem. Uh, but again, if it's, a, if it's an ER doctor, they generally don't respond to these things. But I, I can do the only thing I can do, which is submit the form. Yes, uh, you can submit the form, and also um, I'm surprised that. Uh, you are not going to allow that uh, to go through the approval because I called before with the same situation and they allowed uh, um, three boxes, uh, which which was uh, pretty good because she wasn't taking an antivirus before. What changed uh, since then? Well, in order to get any kind of exception, whether it's a quantity exception, a formula exception, any kind of exception, by a, the department that handles that, which is OptumRN. They have a specific department that handles that. But they, in turn, need to get information from the physicians that prescribe the medication in order to make the decision. Yes, what, what is the department's name? It's done through our mail order pharmacy, OptumRN, but it's called the Prior Authorization Department. Oh, Optimus, Optimus RS, okay. Yes. Okay, so go ahead, submit the form. Listen, they deny it. Um, I'm sorry? If, if they don't get a uh, response from the physician, they deny it. Yes, I know. Uh, so submit the form. So, yeah, I can do that. It's not a problem. Okay, perfect. How many, how many a day is she prescribed? Again? Well, she's prescribed uh, 36 pills, uh, and um, the, the uh, Fancyclover, uh, um, pre um, prescription is um, take uh, three times per day uh, and it will give you uh, a migraine headache. So take the somatriptan uh, ev at the onset of the uh, headache uh, and after three hours or so. Take one pill after three hours or so because you have to take it every, uh, in, uh, every day three times a day. Uh, n no, the medication is uh, use it when at the onset of the uh, headache. So she's going to take the medication. She's taking the the uh, antivirus, Fancyclover, 500 milligrams, uh, and she's going to get the headache. She can take one at the onset uh, when she first gets the headache because if she can, if she gets the headache and it gets too strong, and she doesn't take the pill, she can have a brain hemorrhage and. Um, uh, an epilepsic attack and die. Right. So the simatriptan, she's taking one a day on the outside of the headache, right? No, it, it says take it as needed. So if she takes the uh, the somatriptan one time after the first, uh, say she takes it in the morning, she takes the antivirus in the morning. Then in the morning at about 11 o'clock, she gets the headache. So at about, she takes the, the uh, somatriptan. About um, two o'clock in the if in the afternoon, she takes the other antivirus pill, uh, and about four o'clock uh, she takes she gets the headache, so she has to take another somatriptan. And at night, uh, she can take uh, the she has to take the antivirus again. Uh, so if it's two per day in eight days, uh, in four days, 
then the sumatriptan is going to be gone. Okay. And she has to take the antivirus for one month. Yeah. What was the prescription for again? How many? Uh, it, it's called sumatriptan, S as in Sam, U, M as in Mary, A, T. Oh, what was the quantity amount? Oh, 36. 36 pills. Okay, so the the uh, somatriptan is uh, nine pills per box. It, they they come in a uh, in a box. So if it's nine pills per box, and um, uh, he prescribed 36 pills, then um, she has to to get four bags, four boxes. She got one box, and the uh, pharmacist said the pharmacist uh, uh, said that. You guys did not uh, allow uh, the uh, other three bags to go through. Right. That's, that's correct. Because there is quantity. So yes, but the problem is that she needs to take this medication because she's taking an antivirus, and the antivirus gives her a migraine headache. And she cannot stop taking the antivirus because if she stops taking the antivirus, the shingles are going to get her because uh, she gets tremendous muscle pains and. Um, the open source all over her body, and uh, she's a chronically ill 65 years old uh, citizen. So I don't think that she's going to be able to stand that. Plus, she's dying of cancer. She has lung cancer and liver cancer. Okay. Any questions about any event? I'm sorry? Do you have any questions about any event? No, just uh, if you uh, can give me your uh, last name since you are not giving me your ID number so I can jot down who I spoke with. That's the first initial. My last name is Ellison Larry. Okay, thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, and uh, we want to get a try and get a hold of the doctor and just let them know that they're going to try to be reaching out to him. Uh, yes. Okay. 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 And also, um, you know that the uh, emergency room doctor uh, change uh, a, every certain na uh, time, right? So the emergency room doctor that saw her. It's not the same that prescribed the medication because the emergency room that saw her, Dr. Lincoln, at the um, Highland Hospital uh, in Rochester, New York, she left uh, because her shift was over. She was uh, at this hospital in Highland, um, uh, Highland Hospital in Rochester, New York, for 10 hours from about 5 o'clock in the evening until 5 o'clock uh, the next day. And so Dr. The, uh, Matt um, Matthew, I think is his name, Matthew um, uh, might not be there when uh, I call. So the person, the other doctor that is there is the one that is going to have to authorize this uh, or speak with you. And he doesn't know her because he didn't see her. So that's the problem that uh, citizens, millions of citizens whose identities and government benefits and medical insurances have been uh, having, and this is why they have been uh, dying, because it, it is impossible for them without medical insurance, uh, like um, New York State's trade Medicaid, to get medical care or the medications that they need. Okay, so nobody else can uh, a, a, a authorize that. Only his, only I mean, only da, uh, uh, Matt, the doctor. Well, if, if another doctor will will you know provide the information they need, yeah, they, that's acceptable. I just don't know if another doctor will do it since they don't know her. Exactly, exactly. Well, they have the records. They have uh, the the CT scan that they did on her stomach, uh, the sonogram that they did on her stomach that uh, showed them uh, the problem with her liver. 
uh, and uh, they have the record that they um, that shows that they gave her um, a narcotic called uh, um, home of uh, mo it's a, a, a narc narcotic that is similar as morphine. Uh, so they have that on the record. So hopefully they will be uh, calling you or, or contacting you back and uh, telling you to give her the medication. Right. Okay. Um, that's, that's about all we can do as of right now. So I'll go ahead and get that the sent off and hopefully this works out. Okay, perfect. And may I speak to our supervisor now? Really, if you would like. Uh, let me put you on hold and uh, get one, okay? So Thank you so much. John. Hi, Fernando. This is uh, uh, Solange Martinez. And what was your ID number, Fernando? It is 41437. 41437. Correct. Okay, Fernando. I called um, today uh, AARP because I have a chronically ill epileptic citizen, Luis Aoyasun. Um, who was prescribed uh, her migraine headache medication, so matriptan 25 milligrams um, okay. pills. They, ha they come in a box of nine pills um, each. She was prescribed 36 pills, uh, and um, the doctor uh, that prescribed that was an emergency uh, room doctor because she doesn't have um, her New York State trained Medicaid because it was sold to illegal aliens across the country by illegal aliens mafia member Kevin McGuire and uh, his friend uh, Diane Dane. They all, uh, they both work as uh, state employees, as the commissioners of the Department of Social Services in Westchester County for uh, McGuire and in Livingston County for Diane Dane. So um, the problem here is that since Luisa Yasun doesn't have um, uh, her insurance, she doesn't have a doctor, so she has to get the little care that she uh, can get um, at the emergency rooms. And because of this, uh, she needs to see the doctors uh, and have them prescribe the medication that she needs to stay alive, barely. Uh, so the uh, emergency room of Highline uh, Hospital in Rochester, New York, uh, got a doctor. The doctor that prescribed the medication was not the one that saw the uh, patient, Luis Oyarsson, at a Highland Avenue, I mean at the Highland Hospital. Uh, the doctor that saw her is, uh, the, uh, is called uh, Dr. Lincoln. But Dr. Lincoln's uh, shift was uh, over before they um, uh, told Luis Oyarsson that she could go home. She was there 10 hours uh, from the 13th to the 14th of September. Um, from 5 o'clock uh, until 5 o'clock in the morning the next day. And uh, doctor, uh, the doctor that prescribed the medication, Matt, uh, might not be there because they rotate uh, in the emergency room. So that's the problem that she's having. And millions of other citizens uh, whose identities are sold along with their um, medical insurances to illegals in the country. That's the problem that they face, and that's why uh, millions of them have died because of lack of medical care and medication. And now she's facing this problem. This doctor prescribed 36 pills, and uh, AARP uh, is only allowing nine pills uh, for her. And she's taking an antivirus called Famciclover, uh, 500 milligrams, which was prescribed by another doctor. And the uh, side effect of this antivirus, uh, 500 milligrams, Famciclover, is that it gives her migraine headaches. So the doctor that prescribed this uh, antivirus at first um, was an emergency uh, room doctor, and he said that he was going to give her migraine headaches. But she takes, she, if she takes the medication for her migraine headache at the onset of the uh, headache, which means at the beginning of the headache, she'll be okay. But the problem is that if she only has uh, nine pills uh, for the uh, month uh, worth of Famciclover, she will not uh, have enough. She will run out of the uh, uh, migraine headache medication, which is a side effect 
as a result, uh, uh, which is a result of the side effect of the first medication, the antivirus, he will run out after the eight, I mean, the fourth day. That's why she needs right. to have the uh, 36 pills uh, uh, given to her instead of the nine pills that she was given. All right, ma'am, and I definitely do understand that, and I do apologize. Now, I am seeing here it is the I do have the medication here, and I am seeing there is a limit of nine per day of uh, the nine per day, uh, nine allowed per month. Now. We can put in the exception, but the only way we can put in the exception is if we reach out to the doc, uh, prescribing doctor and get uh, some background information as to why this medication is being prescribed the way it is. Yes. And you said we can't do that because he's an emergency room doctor. Exactly. But that's our only choice. We have to have that. If we can't get into contact with the doctor, we can't do anything. And you cannot get in contact with the doctor because... Uh, the doctor um, that prescribed this medication uh, might not be at the emergency room because they rotate. And also the doctor that prescribed the antivirus, Dr. Romanic, is a doctor that uh, she never saw. He was in the, um, uh, he was uh, substituting the doctor that she saw only once uh, Dr. Libu in Geneseo, uh, because of uh, the same uh, trafficking of government benefits and citizens' identities by government employees like Kevin McGuire and Diane Dane. So she doesn't have a doctor, and the only doctors that uh, she's allowed to see as a result of the stealing of her New York State trade Medicaid and selling, uh, selling it to illegal aliens in the country and illegal aliens mafia members are doctors from the ER. So that's a problem because what's going to happen if she doesn't get uh, this uh, um, medication uh, for the uh, migrant headache? She won't be able to take to continue to take the medication for uh, the shingles that she was given. Some sick over 500 milligrams. prescription to a normal doctor and seeing if like a dark, regular doctor's office and discussing the medication with them? Yes, but she doesn't have medical insurance to see a doctor because it was sold uh, to illegal aliens across the country by government employees at the Department of Social Services uh, and Social Security Administration offices as well as the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Well, unfortunately at this time, if we don't have a doctor we can reach out to to get the medical history as far as why this medication is being prescribed the way it does. We cannot allow more than the quantity limit on the medication. So oh. it's kind of a catch-22. Either she needs to find a doctor that we can reach out to and can get the information from, or she needs to figure out a way of working with the nine, nine pills per month. Those are our only choices, unfortunately. Yes, but the problem is that there is no way of working with the nine pills per month because if she takes the uh, antivirus, uh, she will need the 36 pills uh, or she will run out after the fourth date of the antivirus. She takes the antivirus three times per day and it gets, gives her a migrant headache. But then she, in that case, she's going to have to find a way of seeing a, a doctor at an office or something. She's going to need to find a way of doing that and discussing the medication with them so that way they have the history and they can speak to us about it. Yes, she has. Uh, she saw Dr. Okay. Libu, but she, she, she refused to see her because of the same problem with her medical insurance uh, and the trafficking of uh, her medical insurance. So uh, the Dr. Libu now is sending her bills that uh, saying that she wants her money, uh, she wants to be paid, and she has no way of paying uh, Dr. Libu because uh, her medical insurance, New York State trade Medicaid, was sell, sold to illegals in the country and illegal aliens mafia members, and uh, she doesn't have the money to pay for uh, medical care. So she cannot get a, a, a medical doctor or uh, get uh, the uh, emergency room doctor to follow up on the uh, prescriptions that they write uh, to get them approved uh, by you guys, AARP. Um, and I definitely do apologize, but I 
wish there was something more we could do, but if, if we can't do any of those things, then we are stuck. Our hands are tied. There's nothing we can do. Mm-hmm. And um, I spoke to uh, a representative before, a couple of years back, with a, a similar situation, and she allowed uh, three boxes, I think, uh, per month. How come uh, Luisa Oyarzon is not allowed uh, uh, even three boxes per month now? What changed? Well, as far as what we can do, the only thing we can do is within our quantity limit. So it may be that the quantity limit had changed from previous years. Because uh, you said you spoke to someone else a few years back. Yes, it was a lady, and she allowed that uh, uh, th she, three boxes oh. because she only needed three boxes then. Now she needs four boxes. As far as that goes, there's just nothing we can do at this time, no. Okay, and another thing, um, my second question is, since she was prescribed 36 medication, uh, I mean 36 pills, uh, why is she being uh, forced to pay you or to pay the pharmacist uh, $12 when uh, she's supposed to pay only uh, uh, $2.95 uh, per uh, prescription, because you are dividing it into um, four different uh, months when she was prescribed the 36 uh, pills uh, in one prescription. So now she has to he, she has to pay the amount that she has to pay the copayment four times instead of one time. How come? Mm -hmm. uh, and as long as she gets within the quantity limit, we can cover it, and she would still pay the two ninety five. But if she for the four boxes, right? Because it was one prescription. Well, it was. It would be so two ninety five as long as she gets the nine per month. Okay. That, we can't cover it, and then she would have to pay normal prices. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure that I'm understanding you. What you're saying is that uh, since it's one prescription uh, and uh, the prescription is uh, four boxes of uh, the pills, she only has to pay uh, the 295 for the four four boxes. If we cover it, the problem is with the quantity limit, we can't cover the full four boxes for one the full 36 pills for one month. So because of that quantity limit, it's rejecting on our side, and so we're not assisting at all, and she has to pay normal prices. However, if we get either the quantity limit correct exception put in place by seeing with the doctor, as I said, or if we uh, just stick with the quantity limit and only get the nine per month, then in both of those situations, we would be able to pay, and it would be the 295 for her. But uh, outside of that, no, we cannot. She's not going to get that 295 uh, I'm not understanding what you're saying. What I'm saying is that if she was given one prescription by the doctor, why and the doctor uh, prescribed four boxes, even if it's uh, given to her uh, nine, uh, I mean four at four different times, why does she have to pay uh, four different times the 295 when uh, it was prescribed in one prescription? the 36 pills? Well, each claim would be a different, a different claim. So there would be a different copay for each claim. Now, if she were to get the four boxes in four different claims, which she can't do any other way because it would be a refill too soon, but if she were to do that, yes, it would be four different 295, but it would be four different claims. It doesn't matter what the prescription is, it's about the claim. Oh, if, okay, okay, it would be four different claims, okay. Uh, so in reality, the citizens end up paying um, not only uh, the uh, 295 that they have to pay because their uh, medical records w uh, were falsified and um, AARP wa uh, was given um, the directive of uh, putting her in a, a, a prescription drug plan that uh, will make her make her pay 295 when in reality she should be paying uh, by law uh, 110 uh, or 120 for uh, each box or each uh, 
a prescription drug, uh, which is uh, not brand name, which is generic. So she, in reality, has to pay uh, 120 but since uh, her records have been falsified, like millions of other citizens' records, she has to pay double. Instead of 120 uh, per prescription, she has to pay about $3 per each prescription. And because um, they are uh, even uh, blocking her further by not allowing her to get the medication that she needs uh, uh, at one time, but uh, by uh, dividing the medication, she has to pay uh, double, um, I mean, in this case, four times the same uh, amount, which is already doubled by the falsification of her records in the, the in AARP uh, plans. Uh, she has to pay uh, even more money. Well, that's not quite right. As far as why she's paying the 295 Mm -hmm. It's not, it, dollar twenty is for low income subsidy level two. She's only level one. So in level one, the generics are two ninety five and the brands are seven forty. Only under level two are they a dollar twenty and three sixty. Yes, uh, the problem is that she's level one because she's lower income. She only receives one thousand dollars and eighty five uh, one thousand eighty five dollars every month because. The said government employees uh, working for the Department of Social Services in Westchester County and in Livingston County uh, have been stealing about $4,000 of her um, uh, government benefits uh, each month. Uh, her state pension was stolen by these government uh, employees, and they are only allowing her to get a fraction of her um, uh, uh, Social Security disability benefits, for which she worked dozens of years. Uh, and that was after they stole her half a million dollars home in uh, Dover, New Jersey, at 54B East Blackwell Street, Dover, New Jersey. So what I'm saying is that her records uh, within AARP have been falsified because she's a, a low-income uh, subsidy um, citizen, and uh, somebody put her in uh, two when she's supposed to be in one. That's what I'm saying. She is in one. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Exactly. She, she, and she was supposed to be uh, in low uh, income subsidy level, which is level two. Okay, so if she's supposed to be in level two, take, you can correct that with Social Security. But as far as the um, medicate, as far as this medication goes, uh, yes, the, the 295 is what we currently have because we have level one. Uh, now, if we were to correct that to level two, we could get that to 120. But as far as uh, separating out the claims, I want to make this very clear. You can't run four claims for the same medication and get 36 pills because it would be a refill too soon. You would get the nine for one month, and you'd have to wait 28, 27 days prior to refilling it and getting the next nine. Which means that and she's going to have to uh, go without medication uh, for the shingles. Yes, uh, and the, the problem with the Social Security uh, office is that the illegal aliens mafia has uh, illegal aliens mafia members working at the Social Security Administration office and selling the citizens' identities and government benefits. So they are the ones that are uh, have been falsifying the citizens' um, government um, uh, records as they falsified Luisa Yarson. So they're never going to put her in uh, level uh, two. Uh, when they when they already sold uh, her New York State straight Medicaid and have the illegal aliens uh, that have her social security number and identities um, in level two, because they cannot have two people in the same level with the same social security number, and they're not going to change. Uh, they're not going to take her uh, New York State straight Medicaid and social security and her social security away from the the illegal aliens uh, that they sold it to because they are making a lot of money by selling her identity and social security uh, to illegal aliens. So the taxpayers uh, end up paying for the illegal aliens' medical care and medication. Well, then, um, I would 
call the police then? If you have proof of that, then call the police and inform them of that. Yes, I have proof of that. Uh, I didn't call the police because uh, they are government employees and uh, they are agreeing with the uh, killing of American citizens uh, after their identity and government benefits have been sold to illegals. But what I have called, who I have called uh, are news reporters, investigative news reporters, and also investigative um, uh, reporting uh, organizations that hunt down fraud wherever they can find it uh, and report it to the public. Uh, so the uh, responsible parties are prosecuted. So uh, I have contacted them uh, and the police I have contacted, but I have come across uh, criminals who are um, hired as police officers to continue to perpetuate the crimes uh, across the country and the illegal aliens mafia uh, members um, trafficking of government benefits and citizens' identities. So to answer the question, uh, no, I'm, go I'm not going to call the police. And yes, I do have the evidence and um, I have given it to the pertinent uh, individuals that are going to um, continue to follow up and gather the evidence. All right, ma'am. So it sounds like you have it handled as far as I know. So, like I said, as far, once we get um, the exception put in so that she can, we can have a doctor to speak with, we can get, we can get it so that she can get the full amount of sumatrixin that she needs. Okay. So until then, we're, we're just limited until we can, she can see a doctor and she can have that doctor have the history of that medication. Until she has that or if the emergency doctor is willing to stand behind their prescription, we, there's nothing further we can do. Okay, so. so. I, I can submit it to the emergency room and see what they will do. Okay. You can do that. And then hopefully they'll respond in uh, the appropriate amount of time. Now, just to verify what I have here, do you have a phone number for the hospital that she went to? Sure. I have it right here. You tell me when you're ready. I am ready. 585 Uh, let me see if I have a fax number. Uh, Highland Hospital and fax. Um, they don't list a fax number, but I'm assuming that if you call uh, the hospital's number, they will give you the fax number. Okay, my pleasure. Uh, is there any other questions that you need me to answer? No, ma'am. At this point, all we're going to do is reach out to the uh, emergency room and the hospital in general and just to see if we can get a hold of Dr. Cummins, who wrote the prescription, and see if he can put in the help us put in the authorization. Uh, now, if for any reason he does not respond or we miss that time frame, it will be denied automatically. Um, now, after the denial, we do have the opportunity to appeal the decision. Um, okay, and appeals can take time. Okay. Okay. How long uh, will that uh, take for you to get the uh, approval or or disapproval? Or how long should I wait? Should I wait two hours, one day? How, how does that work? The, the time frame for the doctor to respond is 72 hours. Okay. Three days. Mm -hmm. Once we get the doctor's information, it's a seventy-two. It's another seventy-two hours for us to review uh, the medication and the information we receive. So that's a week. So I would wait a full week, just in case, because if the doctor responds at the last minute, it'll be a full week. Okay. Uh, but after that, um, once we get it all, once we get it all put in place, if there's any questions or anything. Uh, we will let you know, but as far as the denial or the approval goes, if you get approved or denied, you will receive information in regards to that, a letter as well as a phone call. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then after that, if you do get denied, you can just call us back and we can go over the appeals option, okay? Okay, and the appeal, how long does it take? The appeal can take up to one week just for review. So it's in total, it's about two weeks for her to get uh, 
her uh, simple medication. It's not a narcotic. It's uh, only a simple migrant headache medication. So matriptan 25 milligrams, which is the generic for Imitrex 25 milligrams pills. So uh, citizens generally would have to wait about two weeks just to get uh, to do the paperwork to get the approval, and it's not uh, a promise to them. Uh, they can be denied after get, uh, going through the two weeks and uh, through the uh, hassle and the paperwork. Well, it's just because she's getting over the normal amount. That's why we have to go through this extra step. But yes, you are correct. It, w it can take up to two weeks for us to get this uh, approval put in. If we end up going through appeals, yes. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much for your clarification and for your explanation, and you have a pleasant rest of the day. You too, ma'am, and thank you very much for calling into United Healthcare. So, as you can see, the ordeals that um, illegal aliens mafia victims, American citizens, uh, go through is uh, unbelievable and overwhelming, and this is uh, the reason why. Uh, millions of American citizens have died uh, for lack of medication and lack of medical care. Because once uh, your um, identity and social security number, along with your medical insurance uh, and government benefits have been, and other government benefits have been sold to illegal aliens in our country, you are as good as dead because they will block you and they will, uh, the procedure of the illegal aliens mafia is to block any medical care or medication that you can get uh, and they uh, make it put a wall make it almost impossible to get the medication so that's why as i have been documenting for the last 15 years uh, millions of american citizens have died uh, for the lack of medication and medical care and also um, the uh, um, amount of uh, illegal aliens are considered uh, uh, currently from anywhere from 20, 20 uh, million to 40 million American, I mean, uh, illegal aliens. So, if we have 40 million illegal aliens, which I'm sure uh, we have more, uh, that means that about 40 million um, American citizens have uh, been um, uh, assassinated uh, in this way indirectly by the said illegal aliens mafia and illegal aliens mafia members working as government employees by using this. Uh, of replacing their their um, the citizens' uh, medical insurances uh, with another one that uh, does not work and falsifying uh, their documents uh, so they can get as little as uh, medication as possible and as little as medical care as possible so they end up dying when the assassins that the illegal aliens mafia sent after them do not succeed in uh, uh, shooting them or stabbing them or uh, assassinating them this way. So this is the illegal aliens mafia modus operandi. They try to assassinate the citizens directly. If they can, they go to Plan B, which is uh, with the hospitals, the doctor, and the blockage of uh, any um, medical care or medication that they can, that the citizens can get, so they end up dying. Uh, and uh, this is without saying that they contact the hospitals and they uh, order them uh, the uh, government employees that are illegal aliens mafia members uh, order the hospitals not to uh, give them any medical care or to provide them with the results the true results of uh, the citizens tests and exams so the citizens in, in reality don't find out that they're dying when they are dying and like in Lucia Jackson's case Highland Hospital uh, did, not, did, uh, did a CT scan uh, and as well as a sonogram, and they did not uh, uh, provide the true results of uh, these two tests and paid by the taxpayers, of course. Um, and uh, it, this way, they don't have to tell the patient, the citizens, what they truly have, and they don't have to give them medication. In this case, Luisa Oyarsson's uh, doctor Dr. Lincoln at Highland uh, Hospital in Rochester, New York, uh, had a fraudulent slip and told her that her liver was damaged uh, as a result of uh, uh, the uh, sonogram. She saw that her liver was damaged. I mean, uh, the blood test uh, that they did at the at this hospital. 
she saw the enzymes of the liver uh, too elevated, so that means that her liver is damaged. But uh, when she was dismissed by Dr. Cummings, Matthew Cummings, uh, Dr. Cummings uh, lied, uh, essentially, and he said that uh, everything was fine. All the test results were fine, and uh, this, is, this was ordered by the said illegal aliens mafia. So you can have uh, an idea about the power of the illegal aliens mafia in this country and the danger uh, of the, uh, in which the citizens are uh, with this mafia in our country. So I hope that you have learned a little bit more about the illegal aliens mafia and its modus operandi and who are uh, the illegal aliens mafia members working at the uh, different hospitals and different um, government programs as well as different government agencies. Uh, and how they falsify the documents and um, have uh, the citizens end up uh, dead uh, to perpetuate the trafficking of uh, citizens' identities and government benefits. Also, I should mention that before uh, Highland Hospital in Rochester, New York, Luisa Oyarsen was taken to um, immediate care in Rochester, in Victor, New York. Uh, immediate care denied her medical care. Um, and they wanted her to pay uh, about 200, I mean, about $150 uh, to see a doctor when uh, immediate care is one of the uh, urgent care uh, facilities uh, paid uh, or subsidized by go the government, our government and our taxpayers uh, for um, uh, citizens like Risa Yarsun uh, to get care when they need to. Uh, before urgent care, uh, I mean immediate care in Victor, New York, uh, Luisa Yarson was taken to urgent care in Lima, New York. So the urgent care in Lima, New York, where she lives right now, uh, was closed uh, by the illegal aliens mafia order, and uh, she couldn't see a doctor there. Um, this was on September 7, 2016. Uh, before that, um, Luisa Yarsun went to, um, well, she went to Highland Hospital on the 13th of September. Um, and on the 13th of September, she went to immediate care, uh, which, where she was denied care uh, and tried to, you know, uh, enact for money. On September 7, 2016, Luisa Yarsun went to, um, was taken to the emergency room of the FF um, Thompson Hospital. Uh, in Canandaigua, New York, upstate New York, uh, where she was seen by a supposed um, a nurse practitioner, uh, which I believe uh, had the identity of a nurse practitioner but wasn't a nurse practitioner at all um, because I spoke with her and uh, the stupidities and uh, idiot idiotic uh, statements that she uh, made um, made me uh, realize that she was not a nurse practitioner, but uh, somebody impersonating a nurse practitioner, which is something that Illegal Aliens Mafia does a lot. Uh, they sent uh, just anybody to the different hospitals where the victims are uh, taken to the emergency uh, rooms, and they impersonate the doctors or uh, the nurses there or nurse practitioners, and uh, they tell them to um, just uh, go alone and tell uh, the patients, the American citizens, that, they're, that everything is fine, that all the test results were fine, and that she should go home without any medication, without their medic they should go home without any medication or anything like that. Luisa Yarson was sent home with a severe migraine headache um, and without any medication for the migraine headache. Uh, on the uh, 7th of September, 2016, uh, they did a CT scan uh, and they did also a blood test, which um, uh, surprisingly, or which interestingly, I should say, did not show her problem uh, with uh, her liver enzymes uh, and uh, did not uh, show that her liver was damaged. What a coincidence uh, that uh, FF uh, Thompson Hospital uh, test. Uh, results did not show that when it showed that in uh, the test results, the blood test results of the uh, Highland um, Hospital in Rochester, New York. 
um, the uh, uh, nurse practitioner um, there at the SS uh, Thompson Hospital also said that everything was fine, that uh, the CT scan uh, showed no damage uh, in her stomach or anything like that. And this is uh, one of the uh, 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 schemes that the illegal aliens mafia runs on the citizens after they sell their identities and government benefits and they want to kill them. The, the procedure is uh, when they go to the hospital, they are followed by about uh, 100 uh, illegal aliens mafia members and stalked, and they call up uh, the uh, pregnant uh, illegal aliens mafia member and tell them what hospitals uh, the illegal aliens mafia victims uh, or the citizens are taken to, and then they contact the hospital and tell them to falsify the records and tell the citizens that everything is fine even though the citizens are dying. Like in this case, this sample case, we saw Yasun, of course, they take the, uh, her, the true results and uh, give it to put it on the files of the illegal aliens mafia members and the illegal aliens that they sell the citizens' identities to, so the, these illegal aliens uh, can get the medical care and the medication that these uh, citizens are supposed to get and sell these medications uh, in their country um, for a lot of money and right here as drugs uh, in the United States. Uh, they have drug dealers that sell the medication. So uh, in reality, the citizens end up being assassinated um, by a lack of medical care and medication while the illegal aliens uh, get their medical care and medication and sell the medication because in, uh, they don't re they're not really sick. They're just impersonating somebody who is. Uh, another um, thing that I wanted to mention was that um, uh, before taking uh, uh, Risa Yasun to uh, this hospital, I took her to um, four or five different hospitals in Westchester County uh, about a couple of years ago. She, Risa Yasun had um, a chronic um, urinary tract infection uh, where, uh, that gave her uh, shields. Um, her uh, lips were dried, uh, she was shaking, and um, she had a, a, a sweating, uh, she was sweating and she had high fever. And I took her to um, the uh, St. John's Hospital in, the, in uh, Yonkers, New York. She was told that uh, everything was fine, all the test results were fine, and uh, that she didn't need anything or any medication. She was sent home in this uh, way, and she was dying. So I took her to another hospital in uh, Dobbsville, um, Dobbs Ferry, New York, which is the same St. John Hospital, but located in uh, Dobbs Ferry, New York, uh, near um, Yonkers, New York. They did the same thing and uh, uh, falsified her medical records. So I took her to another hospital in um, Bronxville, New York, in that hospital in Bronxville, New York, um, she was. Uh, they they followed the same illegal aliens mafia scheme uh, and told her that everything was fine, uh, that um, she didn't need any medication. So I took her to uh, Mount Kiscott Hospital, which is Northern Westchester Hospital. And uh, since the illegal aliens mafia members uh, had not followed Luis Yasun there, they gave her. Um, um, antibiotics uh, and uh, I mean they gave her a pain medication, morphine for the uh, chronic um, pain uh, but they um, did not give her a medication for the uh, set uh, chronic uh, urinary tract infection. Uh, one thing that I should mention though, in that fair in New York um, we found a doctor at the emergency room that was had not been contacted when she first when we saw Yasun first came in. So he administered um, a dosage of uh, intravenous um, antibiotic for the um, urinary tract infection, and her, the infection uh, slowed down a little bit. But uh, when the illegal aliens mafia contact person 
uh, for the hospital, contacted the hospital uh, and the administration. The doctor, that doctor was contacted and they stopped immediately the treatment and told her after he said that she had a urinary tract infection, the doctor uh, went back on his um, statement and said no, uh, she doesn't have a urinary tract infection. So you see that the uh, um, the audacity and the uh, cynicism and the uh, uh, lack of ethics uh, and professionalism of these um, uh, Goldman employees uh, are um, something out of the, the ordinary. It's something that uh, surprises anybody who uh, documents these this situations. And um, with that being said, I hope that you have learned a little bit more about the illegal aliens mafia modus operandi and how they assassinate the American citizens after their identities and government benefits have been sold to illegal aliens in our country and illegal aliens mafia members.